Okay, hi everybody. We're going to have a quick look at the first half of the 2017 higher paper, the multiple choice section, questions 1 to 10. It's really on Unit 1 in the first half of Unit 2, our dynamic universe and particles and waves. There's the data sheet as usual. Make sure you refer to it when you need to. Let's jump straight in then with question 1. Remember, pause if you wish to have a look at the question yourself first. This is equations of motion, graphs of motion really, and we're asked for the acceleration of the object. So we go straight to our relationship sheet, A equals V minus U over T, final speed was 10, the initial speed was 5, and the time it took between those two points was 6 seconds between 2 and 8. So 5 over 6 is 0 0.83 meters per second squared, and that corresponds to... Answer A, 0 0.83 metres per second squared. OK, moving on, question 2. This is forces. A block is resting on a horizontal surface. A force of 24 newtons is applied as shown. And the acceleration of the block is 0 0.2 metres per second squared. What's the force of friction acting on the block? Well, the 24 newtons is not acting horizontally, so we need to work out the horizontal component of the force. That's the adjacent side, or the horizontal side of that right angle triangle. It's cos for a cross, so it's 24 cos 60, and that will give us the horizontal component of the pulling force. That's 12 newtons. Now the acceleration of the 20 kilogram block is 0.2 meters per second squared. So the unbalanced force is 4 newtons. So if we've got a 12 newton horizontal pulling force and an unbalanced force of 4 newtons, then the friction must be 8 newtons to give us that unbalanced force of 4 newtons. So the friction that we're looking for is 8 newtons. That corresponds to answer B. OK, moving on again. Question 3. This looks like terminal velocity of a skydiver. All right, triple statement question. Which statements is or are correct? First one, the acceleration of the skydiver is greatest between P and Q? No, it's not. Between P and Q, it's a steady speed. Okay, speed is constant, so there's no acceleration. Statement 2. The air resistance acting on the skydiver between Q and R is less than the weight of the skydiver. Well, between Q and R, the velocity is decreasing, so he's decelerating downwards. So there must be an unbalanced force upwards. So that statement's wrong, because the skydiver is decelerating, so the upwards force, that's the air resistance, must be greater than the weight. So that statement's wrong. It says it's less than the weight. Nope, it's greater than the weight. That's very tricky. Statement 3, the forces acting on the skydiver are balanced between R and S. Well, it's a steady speed, so yes they are. So when you're at steady speed, the forces are balanced. So statement three only, that means our answer is C. Question four, a spacecraft traveling at 2.75 times 10 to the eight meters per second relative to a planet and the technician measures the length of the spacecraft as 125 meters. The observed length of the spacecraft is well, this is length contraction, so we look up our relationship sheet for the length contraction relationship. There it is. Substitute in your numbers. The proper length is 125. The speed was 2.75 times 10 to the 8 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. Don't forget to square that, and don't forget to square root the whole bracketed term. That gives us an answer. You do that in your calculator, make sure that you double check these questions. Because these can be very, very easy to make an arithmetical mistake in. 
so make sure you check it twice and in this case we get an answer of 50 meters that corresponds to answer B so remember to square and remember to square root also in these questions remember the length is always shorter so you can always have a guess if the proper length was 125 then you could have a guess at A or B or C length is always shorter Right, question 5. A galaxy has a recessional velocity of 0.3 times the speed of the light. Hubble's law predicts the distance between the Earth and the galaxy is... Well, we need our Hubble's law equation. V equals Hubble's constant times D. Rearrange it. So D equals V over the Hubble constant. You will find both those constants on your data sheet, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, it's 0.3 times 3 times 10 to the 8, and the Hubble constant, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18, is on your data sheet at the front of the exam paper. So there's a substitution in. Remember, none of your rough working is marked, but lay it out clearly. Make sure you double check your calculations. 3.9 times 10 to the 25 metres corresponds to answer B. Question 6. Measurements of the expansion rate of the universe lead to the conclusion that the rate of expansion is increasing. Present theory proposes that this is due to, well, the accelerating expansion of the universe is down to dark energy. Don't confuse dark energy with dark matter. Dark matter holds the galaxies together. So C for 6. Question 7. Three statements about stellar objects. Stellar objects emit radiation over a wide range of frequencies. Yes they do. The peak wavelength of the radiation is longer for hotter objects than cooler objects. No, it's shorter towards the blue end of the spectrum. So, not longer, shorter. And statement three, at all frequencies, hotter objects emit more radiation per unit surface area, per unit time, than cooler objects. Blimey. That is correct, and it relates, really, to this diagram, which you should have seen. A cooler star is the first trace that I drew there. A cooler star has got a longer peak wavelength, a hotter star, that's the second curve that I drew, it's got a shorter peak wavelength, but a far bigger area under the graph. It's emitting far more radiation per unit surface area, per unit time. If it's a hotter star, it's got a shorter peak wavelength, and it's got a higher intensity or a higher irradiance across its whole spectrum. So 1 and 3 are correct and 1 and 3 means our answer is D. Question 7. Moving on, question 8. This is nuclear reactions. Following statement represents a nuclear reaction. Mm, we have to identify nucleus Z. So same story here. Balance the numbers either side of the arrow. Whatever the numbers are on the left, then the sum on the right has to be equal to that. So it will be 256 on the left is the top number. So we want to do 256 minus 4 will give us the top number of the Z nucleus. That will be 252. And on the bottom it's 103 minus 2 is 101. Now if we look at our answers... There are two possible answers that are 101 and 252. It's A and B. How are we going to know which one is right? We're going to have to go to the periodic table. There's a periodic table as part of your relationship sheet booklet. There's what it looks like. And if we zoom in on the area where 101 is, remember the numbers on the periodic table are the bottom numbers, the atomic numbers. There's 101 there. It's Mendelevium, MD. 
Let's go back to your question then and see which one is MD. There we have it. MD 101252 is answer A. Periodic table might be required. Moving on then, question 9. Question 9 is the photoelectric effect. A lot of reading involved in this one. Remember, pause this if you want to read it and have a go at it yourself. So, radiation is incident on a clean zinc plate. This will be light radiation, not nuclear radiation. So, light is incident on a clean zinc plate and causes photoelectrons to be emitted. And the source of light is replaced with one emitting radiation with a higher frequency. The irradiance of the light remains unchanged, which row in the table shows the effect of this change. Well, it's a higher frequency of light. Now, we know then that the energy of our photons, E equals HF. And so, if the frequency of the light goes up, then the energy of the photons must go up. And if the photons have got more energy, then the photoelectrons must be emitted with more kinetic energy. That means we've got two options in our answers of C and D. Now the irradiance is staying the same. That means the total power per unit area stays the same. The energy per second stays the same. But our photons have got more energy. Now this is tricky. If our photons have got more energy, then for the same irradiance, because irradiance, remember, is the number of photons times the photon energy, if the frequency goes up and the irradiance stays the same, the number of photons has to go down. If the irradiance is unchanged, the energy of each photon has gone up, then the number of photons has to go down and decrease. And if there's less photons, there will be less photoelectrons emitted per second. That's very difficult. Remember, if the irradiance stays the same, there must have been fewer photons, and fewer photons means fewer electrons. Right, question 10, and we will finish with this one. Again, it's the photoelectric effect. Light with a frequency of 7.7 .7 times 10 to 14 hertz is incident on a metal. The kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is given. Let's do a wee diagram that shows the energy of the photon, the kinetic energy of the electrons. We're asked to find the work function. The work function is HF0, that bracketed term there. Now, from your relationship sheet, we have a relationship that will allow us to work out that work function. Here it is, EK equals HF minus HF naught, and it's the HF naught that we're looking for. So let's rearrange it. HF minus EK will equal HF naught, and we know that HF, oh, we have to calculate HF, the energy of the photon, is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, times the frequency that's given in the first line of the question, 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 14, that should be. And if I do that correctly on my calculator, 5.11 times 10 to the minus 19. That's the energy of the photon, HF. So we now have to take that, 5.11, subtract the kinetic energy, 2.67, and that will give us the work function which is 2.44, don't forget that's all times 10 to the minus 19. That's a huge amount of work for one mark, corresponds to answer B. That's the first half of the 2017 multiple choice paper, 10 questions, it's taken me about 15 minutes. I've gone really fast, you should give yourself about half an hour for that. We'll be back with the second half a little bit later on in the year. That's it.